portion of the letter of Paul where he speaks about the individuals if they don't work they shouldn't eat. Sometimes that's used to uh, be an excuse for not giving aid to the poor. What Paul was speaking about was the fact that the Thessalonians thought the second coming was going to happen soon. And they felt there were some among them that felt, well, like if the end of the world's next week, why bother to do anything this week? There have been groups periodically who take the gospel about the fact that these various signs will come, that there will be wars and famines and plagues and earthquakes. Some play, say the various changes in the atmosphere and the weather that we've been having is all a sign of the end of the world. Well, there was a group some maybe 30, 40 years ago that thought that, and they dispersed with all their property, went out west to the top of one of the mountains and waited there for the second coming. They had to have been terribly disappointed. And I often wonder what they did, the fact that they had given all their stuff away and that, you know. And there they are, left, still waiting. So it's not so important, I don't think, as to concentrate on the end of the world or time or when we're going to be called before Almighty God. It's what we do with the time that we have. Kind of maybe like I was told by my doctor that I am a type 2 diabetic and that I needed to go on a diet. And the diet he gave me was no sweets, no bread, no pasta, no cereal, and no rice. My first thought was, what do I do about breakfast? Because normally my breakfast consisted of a bowl of cereal and a piece of pastry, either a donut or a roll, something of that nature. I got to thinking that uh, I like yogurt. So I settled on yogurt and fruit, and I could have eggs. But rather than concentrate on all those sweets, which I really liked, and all that pasta that I really liked, I got to thinking about the things that I could have, which amounted to fruit, vegetables, meat, and fish. And as long as I thought in the terms of what I could eat rather than in terms of what I couldn't eat, I didn't have much problem maintaining my diet. I lost 35 pounds within about a month and two inches off my waist. So I got back to wearing belts that I hadn't worn in, in 20 years. So there are benefits that we gain from thinking positively, and most especially in living out our life, you know. Uh, 
if we think of the end, we'll be like the, the child who, when on a journey, keeps saying, are we there yet? Enjoy the trip. The one command that Jesus gave is that we would love one another as he has loved us. Which means learning to deal with one another as we would deal with Christ himself. Last week we celebrated the feast of St. Martin of Tours who was born in France into a pagan family. His father was an officer in the army. And though uh, Martin wanted to become Christian, he was inducted into the army in his teens. One night when he was on duty and riding horseback, he encountered a beggar along the roadside. And it was a particularly cold evening. Martin had nothing with him except the cloak on which, which he had and was using to protect himself from the cold. He took his sword and cut the cloak in half and gave half of it to the beggar. And that night he had a dream in which Christ appeared to him wearing that cloak. So he obviously was informed that what he had done for that beggar, he had done for Jesus. And I think when we encounter people whom we find it difficult to deal with, we all have a favorite image of Christ, I think. that when we encounter those people we find it difficult, we try to put that face of Jesus on them. Thinking, what would I do if this really is Jesus in disguise? I think then that uh, we would find, if we can, project that image. We would find that though the person seems to be difficult to get along with, it's much easier to deal with them than it is with the hardships that Jesus predicted that the early Christians would encounter. Certainly, it isn't as difficult as having our flesh torn from our bodies by the lion. It isn't as difficult as following Jesus to the crucifixion. And so, if we think that putting up with all those individuals that we find it difficult to get along with, really isn't all that bad. That our trials are certainly much milder than the trials that the early Christians had to encounter and which Christ himself endured for our benefit. So there again, we don't worry about when the end is going to come, because for some it may be tomorrow. For others it may be long down the road. I never thought I would live to be 85. 
And I found out that growing old is not all that you thought it was. I just hope that I don't become one of those doddering old priests that still hangs on to the very end. I was with a pastor who, uh, now they would probably say he had Alzheimer's, but then it was just senility. Took an hour and 45 minutes for his mass, his funeral mass, in which he pulled up a chair to the communion rail and started talking to people, and then he'd go, Where was I? If I ever get to that point, I hope somebody comes up and says, You need to quit. <laughs> anyway, so there are things that we do. In dealing with one another, that if we were, uh, if we made ourselves aware of the words of Christ, that whatever we do to one another, we do unto Him, we would certainly act differently in their presence. So as we come together today then to celebrate the Eucharist, let us ask Almighty God through the power of the Holy Spirit to give us the grace to pause and to think in our dealings with others how would we deal with Jesus in this situation? <laughs>